Well, I guess today is a good day to be a Catholic, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to be going over this uh, PDF here. Um, the PDF will be in the description box along with uh, another um, article I'm going to be reading on to you. Um, unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Here's what's going on. And there are many of you who might be aware of this, uh, both those of you who are lost and those of you who are of the Church of the Living God. You go out there amongst the world today and you try to claim religious exemption from receiving the steel of the Jesuit poniard. You're going to meet with a lot of resistance, aren't you? Aren't you? For example, someone who is of the Church of the Living God um, one, uh, you know, wants to keep their job, but they don't want to be uh, receiving the steel of the Jesuit poniard. They could be like, "Well, hey, it's against it's against the scriptures. Uh, it's against my God, uh, my Father, my Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to do it." Okay. Most of the times, apparently, people will be like uh, businesses and companies, and uh, in general, that doesn't exclude you. And remember, here in America. They are slowly implementing, as they have in Australia, no jab, no job, right? But see, there are those out there who are not of the Church of the Living God claiming religious exemptions, making us of the Church of the Living God look bad. If you're not saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, you need to be saved by our Lord Jesus Christ because without him, you have no power, okay? But here's the thing, our military here in America, everybody, with the exception of one, apparently, everybody in our military has been forced to receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard, weakening our military, except for one type, Catholics, as we are going to read this PDF. So... Those, those of you who are not saved of the Church of the Living God, even you who are these Christians who claim religious exemption, this ought to infuriate you. Because you see a lot of these uh, Christians, these ecumenical pond scum, these easy believism devils, okay, saying things like, oh, it's the Christian thing to do to receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard, okay? The Lord had me to do a video on that and be linking it in the description box, okay? But um, there, you know, these, these Christians saying it's a Christian thing to do to receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard. But see, even those of you who are Christian, who have half a brain in your head, it's like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. It's against the scriptures. That's, that's no. What are you going to meet with? You're going to meet with hostility. They're going to say that you, who have brains in your head, saying, you're a terrorist. They're calling evil good and good evil. Okay? That's what they are doing. But now when it comes to the Catholic, especially in our military, um, apparently, those Catholics who are in the military can go ahead and refuse the steal of the Jesuit poniard. See, what's going on with this is the dual citizenship. It is this, what we are going to be looking at is the, what is called the disloyalty teaching of Catholicism, of the Jesuits, okay? Anyone who is a Catholic is a citizen of two nations, okay? Two. The nation and where they will reside, but first and foremost, they are a citizen of the Vatican, and they are under the power of the Vatican, under the two swords of the Vatican, the spiritual and the temporal. And as Roman Catholic Jesuit teaching teaches, disloyalty teaching, that if the Pope says something, even though it directly is against what the government uh, says, according to a righteous standard of government, they are to obey the Pope. You might be saying, well, Brad, you're, you're saying, you say about, uh, you know, how what the Jesuits are, the Jesuits are doing is against um, our, our freedom here in America. Yes, that's right, because 
freedom is given to you by God, not a nation. Okay? And this book, the scriptures say against what the Jesuit order is implementing here in America, here in Australia, and all over the world. Okay? So yes, but when you got a Catholic, they're first bound to the Vatican, to the Pope. So so. Okay? Not Francis. He's he's like smoking Joe. He's the front man, okay? It's Sosa, Arturo Sosa, the power of Catholicism, the Jesuits, okay, and stuff like that, okay? They are first loyal to the Vatican. And if the Vatican would have you to betray your nation, to betray your people, your, your countrymen, if the Pope tells you to do it, you're going to do it. See, this is, like I said, the disloyalty teaching being put into practice. So, according to this, it's a good day to be a Catholic, isn't it? And you got to remember two people. After we, the Church of the Living God, are redeemed, resurrected, caught up, you're going to be left with the Roman Catholics. You're going to be left with the Jesuits. The one world religion that is coming after we, the Church of the Living God, are redeemed, resurrected, caught up, is going to be extreme Catholicism. And it's being put in place today. See, ecumenicalism is bringing all the religions under the control and headship of Rome. Okay? That's why these easy believism devils, they're Catholics. Okay? And the ones here on YouTube, every single one of you, scum! You're Jesuits or Jesuit coadjutors. Okay? <laughs> Big smile there, buddy. Yeah. Okay? You're working for the Vatican. Because, hey, anyone believes, right? Just simply makes a mental thing in their head. Oh, you're saved, right? You ecumenical devils preaching this fake love of God. Love, love them into the kingdom. God loves you. God's love is unconditional. Preach the love of God. You're working for the Vatican. Why don't you grow some stones, boy? Okay? You're working for the Vatican. You're working for the Vatican to bring everybody under the headship of Rome. And then once we, he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way, the church of the living God, once we are redeemed, resurrected, caught up, all you are going to be left behind, this is what you're going to be dealing with. Okay? A little favoritism here. And we're going to look in the scriptures about some of the arguments that people will make about uh, favoritism. Okay? But first, Let's go through this uh, PDF, okay? Let's go through this. All right. Like I said, this is going to be in the description box for you to see yourself. Okay. Archdiocese for the Military Services, United States of America. The Most Reverend Timothy P. Borgilio. <laughs> Big part. Statement on poison crown vaccines and the sanctity of conscience. <laughs> Filthy devil Catholics. Earlier this year, I affirmed that the Archdiocese for the Military Services, USA, AMS, clearly encourages the faithful entrusted to her care to follow the guidance of the Holy See and the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, USCCB, with regard to COVID-19 vaccines. The Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, now if I'm not mistaken, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, if I'm not mistaken, is that the Office of Inquisition? Uh, Inquisition? Someone correct me in the Comments, please. I think that is the Office of Inquisition. The, uh, the Office of Inquisition is still around, by the way. It's never been de dismantled, defunct. It's just been renamed. Euphemism, you know? Change the name of something, you change it. Okay? But let's continue. The Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, which is the Church's highest doctrinal authority, <laughs> speaking for the Bishop of Rome, 
has made clear its position on the vaccines available to mitigate the coronavirus pandemic. The USCCB committees, committees on doctrine and on pro-life activities, unless of course they are protestants, right? have stated that it is morally permissible to receive the COVID-19 vaccinations currently available in the United States. On August 24th, 2021, the Secretary of Defense issued a, mem a, mem a memorandum, excuse me, directing the mandatory vaccination, vaccination of all service members against COVID-19. Since then, some service members have refused to take the vaccine and have requested a religious accommodation through the Religious Reform Restoration Act. Okay, let me see. I, okay. The circum come on. The circumstances raised the question of whether the vaccine's moral permissibility precludes an individual from forming a forming a sincerely held religious belief that receiving the vaccine would violate his conscience. It does not. Yeah, because uh, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Yeah, what is that? What does that say? Huh? Huh? Go there to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Huh? First, come on. Come on. Get the scriptures. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. We're going to be in the scriptures. Follow me along. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit, capital S, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared, not killed, seared with a hot iron. <laughs> I mean Catholics. Okay. Let's continue. Yeah. Yeah, the circumstances raised the question of whether the vaccine's moral permissibility precludes an, uh, precludes an individual from forming a sincerely held religious belief that receiving the vaccine would violate his conscience. It does not. Yeah, why is that? Because their conscience is seared with a hot iron if you're a Catholic. Okay, Catholic, your system is of Satan himself. Your church is, Satan, is Satan's church run by the army of Satan and Jesuit order. You need to get out of that. You need to repent to come to the true Lord Jesus Christ of the authorized version of the scriptures, which your church hates because this is totally against your church Catholic. Okay, even your uh, hotshot uh, Jesuits confess the same, that the scriptures are against them. Okay, you need to get out of Catholicism before it's too late. Okay. Let's continue this. The Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines were tested using an abortion-derived cell line. That type of a link has been for centuries considered remote material cooperation with the evil, with evil and is never sinful. Did, did, did you did you just did you get that? Did you get that? Huh? Let's read that again. The Pfizer and Moderna Moderna COVID nineteen vaccines were tested using an abortion derived cell line. That type of a link has been for centuries considered remote material cooperation with evil and is never sinful. Roll that, just state that in your guts, if you got any. Uh, roll that around in your head a little bit. Let, let, you want to know what they're, what they're saying there? Go to Isaiah chapter 5. You, know, you want to know what that is? Let me tell you what that is. Okay? Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Go there. Verses 20 under verse 23. Isaiah chapter 5. You know that, what we just read? Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 23. Go there in the authorized version of the scriptures. Look at it. Don't look at me. This will be in the description box. Look in the scripture. You want to know what this is? Right here. 
Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Verse 23 which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. That's what that is. That's what that is, people. Okay? Let's continue this. Big part. Yeah, this kind of stuff really bothers me with you wicked Catholics. Okay? Ah. <laughs> the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was developed tested, and is produced with abortion-derived cell lines. That vaccine is, therefore, more problematic. It is more that it, if it were the only vaccine available, it would be morally permissible. If it were the only one available, even though it's... Look at the sophistry, the contradiction that they're saying here. If it were the only vaccine available, available it would be morally permissible. But the faithful Catholic is to make known his or her preference for a more morally acceptable treatment. <laughs> Let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. Yeah, okay. The Congregation of for the Doctrine of the Faith examined these moral concerns and judge that receiving these vaccines does not constitute formal cooperation with the abortion and is therefore not sinful. <laughs> you you read their, their catechism? That what that this filth just said flies in the face of what they teach in their own catechisms. Listen, Catholic. You as a person, spirit, soul, and body, I do not hate you. I hate your system. I hate your system, Catholicism. I hate every false way. I hate Catholicism. I can't wait for our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, to light the match and destroy and burn and destroy Catholicism once and for all. Yay! But Catholic, you're brainwashed. You need to get out. You need to get out because, see, you are in an agreement with hell. The gates of hell have prevailed against your church, Catholic, because your church is run by Satan. Okay? Catholic, please remove your head from betwixt your buttocks and consider these things. It's going to be a link in the description box where we can talk together, you and I, about you coming to the Lord. Broken of your self-righteousness, having godly sorrow that it's your fault that he died, and in fear of the Lord, hopefully you will call upon his name and that he will save you. Okay? You need to get saved, Catholic. If you're a Catholic, you're not, you're not saved. You're a Christian! Yeah, you're a Christian, but you ain't saved. You're not of the church of the living God, Catholic. This, as a Catholic... This ought to, this, this is, like I said, this is flying in the face of what your own catechism teaches. What, you're a Catholic and you don't know what your own system teaches? Oh, no, right, that's right, because they teach you to trust the Jesuit priest. Notwithstanding the moral permissibility of these vaccines, the church treasures her teaching on the sanctity of God. <laughs> you liars! You Catholic devils! <laughs> yeah, yeah, your conscience is seared with a hot iron. Yes, you Catholic, you Jesuit devils! Yeah, brainwash people to go down on a sinking ship so that they can institute the Jesuit Federal Reserve. Yeah, yeah, tell, yeah, Catholic, Jesuit, tell me about conscience. Tell me about conscience, you wicked devil. Come on. Come on. Yeah, tell me about conscience. Right. Right. 
conscience is the most secret core and sanctuary of a man. There he is alone with God, whose voice echoes in the depths, in his depths. St. Paul, the, what is that, V.I. 6th? Yeah, St. Paul 6th wrote, In all his activity a man is bound to follow his conscience in order that he may come to God. <laughs> the end and purpose of life. It follows that he is not to be forced to act in a manner contrary to his conscience, nor on the other hand is he to be restrained from acting in accordance with his conscience, especially in matters and religious. Then explain to me the Inquisition. Explain to me the Inquisition. <laughs> See, right there, they're promoting openly, falsely, Liberty of conscience. But remember what the Jesuits teach. There is, no, there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church. The decrees of the Council of Trent. Let him be anathema. Let him be anathema. Let him be anathema. <laughs> Talk about a facade. What this Pope said, that, that's not what Catholicism teaches. See, that's all part of being ecumenical. Okay? That's all part of being ecumenical. Catholics don't teach that. Your, your catechisms, the teaching from your Jesuit fathers, the Council of Trent, you know, pre-Vatican II. Because remember, Vatican II is a smokescreen to bring everybody under the headship of Rome. And woe be to all of you who are playing along with Catholic ecu uh, ecumenicalism. Shame on you. Shame on you. God loves you. Yeah, shame on you. Shame on you. Accordingly, no one should be forced to receive a COVID-19 vaccine if I would violate if it would violate the sanctity of his or her conscience. Bravo! Tell that to the people in Australia. Tell that to, uh, to our Jesuit government. See, they say one thing for those the initiated, okay, and they say one thing for the uninitiated. This right here is for the uninitiated, okay? So the, the uninitiated, uh, uninitiated, those who are not Catholic, that kind of thing. Okay? The esoteric and esoteric uh, thing. Okay? One is for those who are in the know. One for, is for those who are not in the know. Okay? See, what they're saying here, those who are in the know, the higher ups of the Jesuit order in Catholicism, they know what they are saying, that they, that they go opposite of that. The whole goal is to force that upon everyone. Okay? Now, oh, you have a choice. Well, we'll take this away from you. This, 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 this. You Australians, how is your Freedom Monday, by the way? There are those of the Church of the Living God in Australia who know better, of course. And like, yeah, let's continue this. Individuals possess the civil right not to be hindered in leading their, li leading their lives in accordance with their consciences. And that's not what Catholicism teaches at all. Not at all. Even if an individual's decision seems erroneous or, incon or incon inconsistent excuse me, to others, conscience does not lose its dignity. This belief permeates Catholic moral theology. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're both faced lying to you, people. <laughs> as well as First Amendment ju ju Jewish prudence. Jewish prudence. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the Catholics are all for the American First Amendment. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you you people get left behind. You remember this when you see that man of sin, the son of perdition, um, bringing everybody uh, buddy under the veil of Catholicism. You remember this, okay? Ha! 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 As stated by the United States Supreme Court, Religious beliefs need not be acceptable, logical, consistent, or comprehensible to others in order to merit First Amendment protection. Amen. Amen. The denial of religious accommodations or punitive or adverse per personnel actions taken against those who raise earnest conscience-based objections would be contrary to federal law and morally reprehensible. The Lord rebuke you wicked Jesuit Catholic devils. Explain to me, Catholic, hi, explain to me the Inquisition. Oh, that's how it was. Oh, no, that's how it is. What did, the, what did they say of the Jesuits themselves? She never changes. Catholicism never changes. Only that she gets worse. Explain to me the Inquisition. Explain to me Fox's Book of Martyrs. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, you filthy Catholics. Oh, that's uh, Protestant propaganda. Yeah, just like the St. Uh, uh, Saint Bartholomew massacre was. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the Holocaust was. Yeah. Those who refuse the COVID-19 vaccine must continue to act in charity for their neighbors and for the common good by undertaking means to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 through wearing face coverings, social distancing, undergoing routine testing, quarantining and remaining open to receiving a treatment should one become available that is not derived from or tested with abortion-derived cell lines. You're going to see this PDF with your own eyes. Even Catholics are admitting about the vaccines and the aborted um, children. Okay? Timothy... P. Borgilio, Archbishop for the Military Services USA, 12th of October, 2021. That was yesterday! And there are some links for you to see if you so choose. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, we get rid now. beg your pardon there, yes. Like I said, that's going to be in the description box for you. So, be, uh, beg your pardon, brother. Let me, uh... Oh, 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 uh, a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Now, another thing that's going to be in the description box here is this uh, link here with... Uh, wait, wait, wait till you get a look at this. And uh, you'll see, I'm going to link these in the description box. A dearly, dearly beloved sister provided all of these for, for me. And uh, <laughs> put a fire under me this morning. But you're going to see this picture of this Roman Catholic Jesuit priest with the Dagon fish helmet on his head uh, doing the sign of the curse on the uh, Catholic soldier with this. This is so disgusting. Oh, oh all right. Let's, let's read this. Catholic troops can refuse COVID vaccine, Archbishop declares. Now think about this, okay? You're a Protestant, and the government says you can't do, you can't quote, uh, you can't claim res uh, religious exemptions. If you want to, why? I don't know you would want to remain in the military, but if you want to remain in the military, it's like, okay, you don't want to do it? Okay, dishonorable discharge? But see, if you're Catholic, you can claim it. So, 
So what does this boil down to in the long run? Oh, in the long run, no man might buy or sell save they who had the mark of the beast in his hand or in his forehead or convert or die. You, you want to use religious exemption? Become a Catholic. Become a Catholic. Convert to Catholicism. Oh, wait, there are many paths to God. God loves you. You do believe in Jesus, right? Okay, so that means we are separated brethren. <laughs> hmm. Do you see? Do you see? And remember, Catholics are Christian. Yeah, you bet I am mad. No, excuse me. You bet I am angry. Mm. No one should be for... Uh, now, I'm reading this verbatim. Going to be in the description box for you. Okay? No one should be forced to receive a COVID-19 vaccine if it would violate the sanctity of his or her conscience. And we already read the PDF. Okay. Catholic U.S. troops should be allowed to refuse the COVID-19 vaccine based solely on conscientious objection and regardless of whether abortion-related tissue was used in its creation or testing, the Archbishop for the Military declared in a new statement supporting service members who are seeking religious exemptions. Okay, and then the... Um, no one should be forced to receive a COVID-19 vaccine if it would violate the sanctity of his or her conscience, said Archbishop for the Military Services, uh, Timothy P. Borgilio, in a statement released Tuesday. And that's the PDF that's going to be in the description box that we read. Borgilio previously has supported President Joe Biden's mandatory vaccination order for U.S. troops. So you're, you're in the military. You're not a Catholic. But you're a Christian anyway. But okay, let's say you're in the military and you are actually of the Church of the Living God. Why are you in the military? Never mind. But okay, so you're truly saved in the military and you, you, you believe the scriptures and you know about Leviticus 13 and you know what's going on and you say, no, no I'm going to stand for my God according to his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. Dishonorable discharge kick you out, but... But you see your, your Catholic comrade claiming the same thing that you are, and yet he gets to get away with it? And then that Catholic comrade with his big smile comes over to you. We both believe in the same God. No, we don't. But we both believe. Come on, let me, let me tell you about Catholicism. And see, the U.S. military has already been weakened with the steel of the excess with Punyard. But yet keep certain Catholics in the military who refuse to take the steel of the Jesuit poignard, knowing what it's all about. Okay? So then those who have received the steel of the Jesuit poignard get sick, die, or whatever. Then what's left are openly professed Roman Catholic soldiers in the American military whose first Loyalty is to the Vatican and to the Pope. You figure that one out yourself, buddy boy. You figure it out. What could happen? You figure it out. Yeah, okay, let's continue. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little angry. Well, you don't like that I raise my voice, huh? Well, I need to be a little bit more softer for you. Not here, boy. Especially when it comes to Catholicism. No way. But Borgiorlio previously has supported President Joe Biden's mandatory vaccination order for U.S. troops, citing the church's guidance that permits Catholics to receive even vaccines derived from fetal tissue. When no other vaccine option is available. In his new statement, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them, 
The Archbishop said that while he still encourages followers and troops to get vaccinated, some troops have questioned if the church's permission to get vaccinated outweigh their own conscience, conscious objections to it. And see, the Jesuit goes through what is known as the spiritual exercise so that they will become act cadaver, a mindless sword in the hand of their provincial. Again, that's why Captain Smith uh, of the Titanic, who was a coadjutor for the Jesuit order, that's why those guys could go down on a sinking ship for the greater glory of God. Okay? Because why? Their minds, their consciences have been seared with a hot iron. They have no individual recognition. They are a corpse. They are a sword, a lifeless sword in the hand of their provincial. And they will follow orders no matter what it is. All Jesuits are under orders, aren't you? Aren't you? And they're coadjutors who are not openly Catholic. They're under orders. They're, they're led around by dogs that bark. Hmm. Some troops have questioned if the church's permission to get vaccinated outweighed their own conscious, conscious objections to it. It does not. Borgilio, Borgilio wrote, sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name for those of you who would know how to say it better. It does not. Borgilio wrote, the Archdiocese for the Military Services created by the church in 1985 claims responsibility for 1.8 million service members and their families at 220 installations. Borgiolio was appointed by Pope Benedict XVI in 2007. 100, 1.8 million Catholic service members. And like I said, those who are not Catholic in the military here in America when the uh, steel of the Jesuit poniard catches up to them, you're going to have an elite amount, uh, uh, elite number of Roman Catholic soldiers in the American military whose first loyalty and prior priority is to Rome! Yeah. Yeah. In August, Borgilio was quoted by Catholic News Agency, a publication of Eternal World Television Network, <laughs> supporting the Pentagon's then forthcoming vaccine mandate, saying, The Church, including Pope Francis, <coughs> excuse me, had recognized the morality of the vaccine. But, the article added, the Archbishop said that while a person could object from the mandatory vaccine due to their personal conscience, even that should be formed, even that should be formed by the teaching of the church. There's no salvation outside the church. That is what Catholicism teaches and what they mean is themselves. Look, I look, I don't care if you're lost, atheist, claim to be, you serve you you serve God, the one that you look at in the mirror, doesn't matter. This ought to make you irate. This, okay? This ought to make you irate. Check your pulse, buddy boy. Hmm? This ought to make you irate. Borgilio's Tuesday letter appears to formalize that exemption. It begins with an explanation of how Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines that were tested using an abortion-derived cell line, and you can read the catechism yourself, the, they are they are openly against abortion, they claim, except if it has to do with Protestants or those of us of the Church of the Living God or anyone who wants nothing to do with Catholicism in general. Okay? Remember, to the Catholic, you're either Catholic, 
heretic, a Protestant. Okay? They put people in the categories. If you're not a Catholic, overall, you're a heretic. Okay? Hmm. Let's read that again. Borgilio, Borgilio's Tuesday letter appears to formalize that exemption. It begins with an explanation of how the Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines that were tested using an abortion-derived cell line are still not considered sinful by the Catholic Church because it is remote material cooperation with evil. So just a little, so a little leaven is okay. A little sin doesn't hurt you. People, wake up. Wake up. Get your head from betwixt your buttocks. Okay? Yeah, somebody's got to say it to you like this. Wake up. Remote material cooperation with evil. You'll see it in the PDF. Let us do evil that couldn't it come. A little leaven doesn't leaven the whole lump. <laughs> people. People. Okay, come on. Come on, people. Come on. Hello, McFly. Is anyone home? Come on. Okay. The Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. I think that is the Office of Inquisition. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, please. The Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith examined these moral concerns and judged that receiving these vaccines does not constitute formal cooperation with the abortion and is therefore not sinful, Borgilio's letter reads, and you'll see it. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine, however, was developed, tested, and is produced with abortion-derived cell lines. The Archbishop said, Catholics still may accept that vaccine, but only if no others are available and they make known their moral objections. <laughs> this isn't funny, but the, the blatant hypocrisy of the Catholic Church. While the Pope has deemed, yeah, COVID-19 vaccines to be not sinful. Of course! Of course, because they were created by the Jesuits or Catholics. Borgilio emphasized the sanctity of conscience. If the vaccine violates the sanctity of an individual's conscience, they should not be forced to receive the vaccine. This deviates from previous statements from the Archdiocese. When Borgilio encouraged troops to receive whatever vaccines became available. In the case of vaccines to protect against the coronavirus poison crown pandemic, the highest doctrinal authority of the church, speaking on behalf of the Bishop of Rome, has made it clear, has made its clear position on the vaccine available, uh, vaccines available, said Bajorlio in March. And then you'll see that it gives you the opportunity to see what was said. In, our, in August, Borgilio voiced support for the Pentagon's vaccine mandate. Certainly, no vaccine is an absolute, but the military is bound to live, work, and recre recreate together, he said. It seems prudent to ensure that they do not infect each other. Two months later, the Archdiocese has amended its message. The denial of religious accommodations, only if you're Catholic, or punitive or adverse personal actions taken against those against those who raise earnest conscience-based objections would be contrary to federal law and morally reprehensible. Shut up, you Catholics," said Borgilio in his letter. When Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin announced in August that the vaccine would be soon become mandatory, the Defense Department stated that each military service branch would be responsible for determining religious exemptions. Only for Catholics, though? Hmm. Church of the Living God, why are you in the military? But, but, Church of the Living God, nope, take it or get dishonorable discharge, okay? And whatever your religion is, okay? 
No, got to be a Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. You know when you, you, you saw Smoking Joe take the uh, sal saline solution? Same with uh, President uh, Kamala Harris, take the saline solution. Do you people, do you people really believe my countrymen? Do you really believe Smoking Joe and President Kamala Harris actually took what the Jesuits are giving everybody else? Do you, do, do, do you really believe that? Do you really believe that Smoking Joe actually took the thing, the poison that they're giving to everybody else, huh? Do you really believe that? I pity you if you do. I pity you if you do. I really do. I pity you. I pity you. Okay? I pity you. There is a religious exemption possible. There is... A religious exemption possibility for any mandatory vaccine and there is a process that we go through to counsel the individual both from a medical and from a command perspective about using a religious exemption Pentagon spokesman John Kirby said at the time and you got to remember people America is a Jesuit nation the only religion that is exempted in the eyes of our government here is Catholicism. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. At the Association of the U.S. Army's huge annual conference in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday, the second question posed in a town hall with Army Secretary Christine Wormuth was on whether troops could receive vaccine exemptions. Wormuth responded yes, but then emphasized the department's reasons for requiring the vaccine in the first place. Mm -hmm. The reason that the department has mandated the vaccine for the entire military is because it's a health safety and readiness issue. Wormuth, Wormuth said, Army Chief of Staff General James McConnell said 91% of the Army's active duty force is vaccinated. So when the steel of the Jesuit poniard, the thing kicks in, whether they turn on the 5G or the uh, ticking time bomb that they are or whatever, uh, when it catches up to that 91%, what 9% are going to be left? Religious exempted Catholics to a military that is just going to be so weak that say if an invading force from outside our nation comes to take America. Those who refuse the COVID-19 vaccine must continue to act in charity for their neighbors and the common good. You know, kill yourself. By wearing masks, social distancing, and testing routinely, or Bejolio's letter closes. And once a treatment becomes available that is not derived from or tested with abortion-derived cell lines, he said, troops should remain open to receiving it. People. Catholics themselves are admitting to aborted, abortion-derived cell lines being in these things. Okay? Please don't buy the lie that there is no uh, aborted children involved with these things. They're admit even the Catholics who are going to be the ruling power after the Church of the Living God is redeemed, caught up during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? You need to wake up. You need to wake up. You need to wake up now. Like I said, you're not of the Church of the Living God. You're a Christian, religious, whatever you want to call yourself. But if you're not of the Church of the Living God, this stuff ought to irritate you. This stuff ought to make you irate. Now, 
There will be some out there who glibly know something of what the scriptures say. It's like, well, there was a distinction between the Jews and Gentiles in the Old Testament and stuff like that. So uh, as far as favoritism, you know, there was in the Old Testament. Let's look at that. Let's look at what the scriptures have to say about this, shall we? Because some out there will be, well, yeah, it says that the Jews were supposed to treat the strangers differently and that kind of stuff. It's kind of true, yes. But why is that? Why is that? Turn in your authorized version to the, of the scriptures. The King James Version that is called. Get a copy of the scriptures. Don't use a Bible. Get the scriptures, okay? The King James Version. That is the perfect, inerrant. Given by inspiration, word of God. Anything else is fake. It is a Bible, and it comes from Rome. Okay? So, Exodus chapter 12, verses 40, on to verse 49. Follow me along. Okay? Exodus 12, verses 40, on to verse 49. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. When the Lord brought, obviously, the children of Israel out of Egypt. For our instruction and in righteousness today for the church of the living God, God brought us out of the world in type. Egypt here is being referred to as a type of the world for our instruction and in righteousness. This particular Pharaoh and then and the Pharaoh's sins are likened onto a type of Satan. Okay, So God has rescued us, redeemed us out of the world that we may be one in him in Christ Jesus for our instruction and in righteousness. Okay, let's continue. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. But every now, stranger. What is a stranger? Someone who is not in the lineage of the Hebrew. The Hebrew line is directly Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That line, okay? Because remember, it is in Isaac. Your seed will be called, okay? The chosen son. Ishmael was not the chosen son. Ishmael was born out of Abraham and Sarah, taking it upon themselves to fulfill God's promises themselves and not waiting on the Lord, okay? Okay? You get, did two videos on that. Put them in the description box as well, okay? But every man's servant that is brought, bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. So for someone who is not a Hebrew, a Jew, in order to keep under the law, to keep the Passover under the law, to be right with God, they had to be circumcised, they had to adopt the principles of the law. See? Okay? Someone, a Gentile, a stranger, who is not of Israel, who wanted to be right with God in the Old Testament under the law, they would have to adopt the principles of the law, essentially becoming Jewish. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. A foreigner and an hired... Oh, did we read... Yes, we did. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house. Neither shall ye break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover of the Lord. Stranger, someone who is not of Israel, wants to keep the Passover of the Lord. Remember under the law, keeping the Passover was a mandatory thing. Okay, today in this dispensation, Christ Jesus is our Passover. Passover is not a requirement for salvation or to be or to stay saved or to be right with God. Okay, if you want to celebrate it, go ahead. 
It's not a requirement for salvation today. Okay? We'll get a, a little bit more on that later. Okay? But if a stranger wanted to keep it, what did he have to do? He would have to take on the covenant promised unto the fathers. He would have to join himself unto the people of the Lord. How? Let all his males be circumcised and let them and let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Now in context, this is talking about in context, under the law, different dispensation. Someone, the circumcision was for the Jews. A seal in the flesh. A sign. Okay? Okay? So, if someone wanted to keep the Passover, who was not of Israel, they would have to become a Jew, essentially, getting circumcised and, sized and going under the law. Okay? Verse 49. One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Now, verse 49, what is that talking about? In context, one wanting to keep the Passover. Okay? Again, we just looked at it. If a stranger, someone who is not of Israel, wanted to keep the Passover, he would have to get circumcised, go under the law, keep the law, and become Jewish. Okay? For under the law. So one law shall be to him that is homeborn of the Jew, of the Hebrew, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. You want to be right with God? In the Old Testament under the law, there was not this way, this way, this way. There was only one way. Going under the law. Mm. Like today, there is only one way. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the way of the cross. Not going up some other way, proving yourself to be a thief and a robber, like Catholicism does, like these easy believism devils do, who are Jesuit Catholic coadjutors themselves. Okay? So there's no hypocrisy in our Lord. Okay? But wait, wait, wait. Go to Numbers now, chapter... Oh, wait a minute. We went... Wait. Numbers chapter 15. We'll get to Leviticus here in a second. Numbers chapter 15. Now, the context was that in for one who would serve the Lord, who wanted to keep the, the Passover, who wanted to be right with the Lord under the dispensation of the law. Okay? Numbers chapter 15, verses 13 under verse 15. All that are born of the country shall do these things after the manner, in, off, in an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if a stranger sojourn with you, or whosoever be among you in your generations, and will offer an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord, as ye do, so he shall do. See, there was no different way uh, under the law. You wanted to do things God's way. You wanted to be right with the Lord. You had to do as the Jews did. You had to go under the law. Okay, you had to keep the ordinances of the law. You wanted to keep the Passover, you needed to be circumcised. You wanted to be right with God in the Old Testament under the law. Even if you weren't of the Hebrews, you had to do it according to the dictates given on to the Jews. You couldn't be a thief and a robber, climb up some other way. Under the law, as it is in this dispensation, there is only one way. Okay? The way God chooses in the dispensation of the law. He chose the law. In this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, the way of the cross. Okay? This is very easy to get. Let's continue this. Verse 15. One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourneth among you. That one law in pertaining to offering offerings, as we have already looked at, as keeping the Passover, being right with God under the law required everyone who would be right with, the, with God under the law to do what was contained in the law. Okay? That's how it was in the Old Testament. Guess what? That's not, it has not changed that in the New Testament. Oh, <gasps> what do you mean, Brad? No, we don't keep the law. We don't keep the law. I've done plenty of videos 
uh, against that, about people who like to say that you got to keep the law of Moses today. No, no, no. What does that mean? What God chooses. He chose the law. Under the dispensation of the law, he has chosen the cross for today. And you go to the cross today by being broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, sorry for your sins, it's your fault that he died, and having fear of the Lord, and in fear of the Lord you call upon his name, and that he might save you. Okay? So there's only one way to be right with God. In the dispensation under the law, it was through the law. Today, in this dispensation, it's the cross. The death, burial, and resurrection. The blood shed on the cross. It's only one way. Okay? It's only one way. It has always been one way. The way that our Lord has chosen. Okay? Are you with me? Let's continue. Verse 15 again. One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourneth with you. An ordinance forever in your generations. As ye are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. One law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourneth with you. So see, again, again, you want to be right with God under the, test, uh, under the Old Testament, under the law, you had to do the dictates that were contained in the law, which was given unto the Jews, okay? You want to be right with God? You had to do it his way. But go now to the Leviticus chapter 24. Leviticus chapter 24. Let's look at something very interesting here. Verses 17 on to verse 22 in Leviticus chapter 24. Now, we, will look, we looked at those things as pertaining on what one who is not of the Jews, Hebrews, to be right with God under the law. Okay? They had to do those things. But what about in a general sense? Remember... Remember, the law was given on to the nation of Israel, okay, to be a nation. We're going to look at that a little later, okay, to be a nation, to be God's representative, like we, the Church of the Living God, are, okay? Those were the laws that they were to keep in that land, okay? And we looked at this already about the laws pertaining to be right with God, okay? But what about generally, in a general sense, you know, generally? You know, basic laws. Leviticus chapter 24, verses 17 on to verse 22. You can read the whole context. It's talking about even uh, uh, verse 16. Um, let's read verse 16 on to verse 22. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall, surely stone, shall certainly stone him. As well the stranger, those who are not of Israel, and he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. Verse 17, on to verse 22 now. And he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. Uh, that's a blanket statement covering both to those who are under the law and those who are not under the law. And he that killeth a beast shall make it good, beast for beast. Okay? And if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, done, so shall it be done to him. Okay? Righteous judgment, righteous laws. Note, this is not specifically indicating just for the Jew. Okay? Uh, this was given on to the Jew, to the Hebrew, yes. But in that nation, in that land, these were the laws that they were to live by. And the stranger who was in that land, given on to the Jews by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, were expected to adhere to these laws, even though they were not of the Jew. You don't say. Verse 20. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him. And he that killeth a beast, he shall restore it. And he that killeth a man, he shall be put to death. Ye shall have one manner of law, as well for the stranger, as for one of your own country. 
for I am the Lord your God. What differs to what we uh, already looked at? This is for practice in the nation of a general law, while as the other things that we looked at were in practice onto relation for one being right with God. Do you get it? Do you get it? So see, there was no hypocrisy in law, okay? In law, general law for the rule of the nation. Whereas we looked at in Exodus and Numbers, law re, uh, uh, pertaining, um, oh, what's the word, uh, pertaining on to being right with God, you know? Correlating, that's the one I was thinking of. Thank you, sister. As correlating to being right with God, okay? But Leviticus chapter 19, Leviticus chapter 19, verses 33 on to verse 37. Come on. This, I, this has been read in uh, Passover dinners. Some of you who are Hebrew, I think you need to remember this. Leviticus 19, verses 33 on verse 37. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. Why? But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you. And thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Okay? Now, this is not directly talking about in relation to them being right with their God. But in a general sense, if someone were to sojourn who is a Gentile in Israel, the laws that we already looked at in Leviticus chapter 24, and what we're also going to look at, apply to those, not only those who are under the law, but to those sojourners, strangers, see, a just law to the Jew and also to the Gentile, see. Just laws, ones that don't, Adhere to favoritism to class. <laughs> Get it? Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, in metyard, in weight, or in measure. Just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hin shall ye have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe all my statutes and all my judgments and do them. I am the Lord. See, it's talking about fairness, okay? Fair, because it says right here in verse 34, But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Okay, they were to treat them fairly. Okay, when it comes to being uh, right with their God, with the God of the Scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, under the law, they had to go and do that which was under the law. But basically, in a general sense, they had to adhere to these rules, these laws. Just and fair and equal. Oh, Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Oh, America, are not God's ways equal and yours unequal? Okay, and now, now, you can read about this in 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 41 on to verse 43, okay? Let's go there, let's go there. I say it, let's go there. Come on. 1 Kings chapter 8. I've already done videos on this before, but come on, fingers, work with me. <laughs> 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 41 on to verse 43. Moreover, this is Solomon giving his sermon. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake, for they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth for thee. That, the, that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee as do thy people Israel and that they may know that this house which I have builded is called by thy name. If a stranger go and pray 
then uh, King Solomon is like, Lord, please hear the prayer of this stranger who are not of your people. Okay? King Solomon asked that. And anyone can pray. But who are you praying to? Mary? The blasphemous little uh, Baal cookie? Hmm? Who are you praying to? Uh, that man of sin, the son of perdition, the Christian Jesus that is being preached to you uh, by Christians today in their buildings? Or our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the God of the authorized version of the scriptures? Which one are you praying to? I wonder. Now go back to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 14. One verse in Deuteronomy chapter 14. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 21. Now, context. You got to remember, going under the law, the kosher thing was there. The dietary restrictions were there. Okay? Children of Israel, because body and soul were connected, that circumcision made without hands was not there yet. So whatever they ate or touched uh, directly it, uh, affected their souls. Talked about that many times before. But, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 21. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates. Why? Because the stranger is not under the law unless he wants, you know, to be right with God. But in a general sense, the stranger right there being talked about. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, those who are not under the law, those who are not seeking our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, as they were to seek him under the law in this dispensation, okay? That he may eat, or thou mayest sell it unto an alien. For thou art an holy people, separate other than unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. So, they could sell that which they were forbidden to eat onto a stranger. See, that's not a contradiction. That's not a favoritism. See, if someone, again, if a stranger wanted to be right with God, they had to go under the law. If they wanted to keep the uh, Passover, they needed to be circumcised. They needed to do what was pertaining in the law to be right with God. Okay? But if they weren't and just in Israel as it were, they were, to, they were all to follow the same law. Okay? And they could, what they weren't allowed to eat, give it to the Gentile. Sell it to them. Give it to them. See? Deuteronomy 15 now, verses 1 under verse 5. Very important to get the context on this. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. This was particularly pertaining on to the Jew, Israel, the Hebrew. Okay? And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbor shall neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the Lord's release. Okay? Specifically addressing the Jews. Okay? Verse 3. Of a foreigner thou mayest exact it again. But that which is thine with thy brother, thine hand shall release. Save when there shall be no poor. Here's the condition. Save when there shall be no poor among you. For the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, pay attention, to observe to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. You might be saying, well, that's a contradiction. No. Okay. Number one, he's talking directly onto that release onto the Jews. And verse three, of a foreigner thou mayest exact it again. A foreigner who has not taken onto themselves to go under the law to be right with their God. And verse four, the, the cause of it, save when there shall be no poor among you, then you will no longer exact. Are there not still poor among you? This very day? When will totally the poor be removed? 
probably during the kingdom of heaven, which is all works. See, this isn't a contradiction, okay? This is not a contradiction. The foreigner there, someone living in Israel who is not under the law. And what this is specifically talking about is that which is pertaining to the law. See, okay? This does not hold in as a general law as thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, that kind of thing, which is there for all, okay? Okay? You get it? Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23. Again, we're going to look at something very similar. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 17 on to verse 20. There shall be no whore of the daughter of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Beg your pardon. Excuse me. Thou shalt not lend upon usury, usury to thy brother. Brother, someone who is of your kindred, and also who worships the same God. Usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Upon a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, someone who is not your kindred or who is not of your religion. Blessed be, uh, blessed be the head, blessings be upon the head of him that selleth corn, but woe be to him who withheld it. Okay? We are supposed to take care of his own. Like it says in the New Testament, that you're worse for, than an infidel if you provide not for your own. Okay? Verse 20 again. Oh, verse 20 again. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury. Why? That the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to in the land whither thou goest to possess it. And our Lord Jesus Christ himself even said, called us Gentiles, dogs. Okay? Okay? You might be saying, well, that right there is proving another class. But see, <laughs> the context of this, of what we're directly looking at, is in relation to those who are keeping covenant as adverse to those who are not. Whereas it says in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, Paul, okay, Paul gives our commandments that we are to keep today. You know, not keeping the Sabbath, uh, keeping the Sabbath isn't one of them, okay, for an example. Okay, but those basic, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet, that kind of thing, thou shalt not bear false witness. Those are general laws pertaining on to all that should be kept. Okay? Okay? Where does your conscience come from? How do you know instinctively that it's not a good thing to kill? Okay? But what we are looking at specifically is, and like I said, is applying to those who are under covenant to seek the Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, under this dispensation as adverse to those who are not. Okay? You get it? And now... Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 25. Deuteronomy chapter 25. Verses 13 on to verse 15. And this pertains again unto a righteous judgment, not particularly pertaining unto those under government covenant seeking the Lord God of the Scriptures. Verses 13 on to... Verse 15 in Deuteronomy chapter 5. Uh, let's read verse 16 as well. Verses 13 on to verse 16. Thou shalt not have in thy bag divers weights, a great and a small. Thou shalt not have in thine house divers measures, a great and a small. But thou shalt have a perfect and a just weight, a perfect and a just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. 
for all that do such things are all for all that do such things and all that do unrighteously are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Remember, he maketh the sun to shine on the good and the evil, and the rain for on the good and the evil as well. Okay? See, just laws. But when it came to pertaining to correlating onto being right with the God of the Scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, during the dispensation of the law, you had to do the things pertaining to the law. See, see the difference between a law for the nation rather than uh, the law that pertains to being right with God. There was a difference there. See, difference between the two laws. See. Also now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Remember, pertaining unto being right with God. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. You might be asking, well, well, how does this pertain to what we looked at? It pertains unto it quite a bit. See, Catholic, Catholicism says there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church. Okay? We, the Church of the Living God, we know that there is only one way, our Lord Jesus Christ. But we are not going to exclude uh, giving the gospel unto those who are outside of the Church of the Living God. We want those people to be saved. Okay? And if you choose not to um, come to the Lord Jesus Christ on His terms, um, okay, we're not going to put you to death for, uh, for that like the Catholics will. But 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14, on to the close of the chapter. Now, this is not directly talking about marriage. This is talking about fellowship, you know, as seeking our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, in this dispensation. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship, uh, 2 Corinthians 6, verses 14 on verse 18. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Infidel. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore... Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Then there is those of you that, well then, you're saying that you should just separate yourself totally from everybody from the world, and just be in your own little uh, cult kind of thing, and just like, you know, no. No, 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 no. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, okay? Come on, come on, come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9, on to the close of the chapter. Verse 9, uh, 9 on to verse 13. Okay? See, the context of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18, is being yoked together with those who call themselves of the church of the living God, and they are really not. Okay? What are, are you going to, like what these church buildings do? They invite, they're all full of lost people, but the, the, the idea is bringing lost people in amongst the saved so they can all worship God. No. No. But to totally uh, abstract ourselves from being out there? 1 Corinthians 5, verses 9 on to verse 13. I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators. Yet, not altogether with fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. We are in the world, people. We are not of the world. It's a big difference. Okay? But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator 
or covetous, or an idolater, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. See, here's the thing. We are in the world. We are not of the world. We as the church of the living God, we have a specific purpose. But the Jews under the law also had a specific purpose. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. I'm going to let the scriptures tell you. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Of course, I hope you are following me along. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 10. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Talking about what happened in Numbers. You know, they were made to wander in the wilderness for 40 years until those uh, people, that generation, who brought a bad report of the land, who doubted the Lord, would die in the wilderness. And this, this generation here is the children of those, okay? Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. See, this is said unto a nation, not an individual, okay? Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. The way you serve the Lord reflects him. That whole held true under the law and after the law in this dispensation. You get it? Let's continue. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Again, who's supposed to teach your kids? Oh, yeah, Jesuit trained teachers, yeah. <laughs> While we're in Deuteronomy chapter 20, uh, chapter 4 here, uh, look at verses 20 onto verse 24. Go across the page. Remember, children of Israel were redeemed out of Egypt to be God's example unto the nations. Our instruction in righteousness. God brought us out of Egypt, the world, that we may be his representative unto the nations, the lost. Deuteronomy 4, verses 20 on to verse 24. 
But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, and swear that I should not go over Jordan, and that I should not go in unto that good land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan, but ye shall go over and possess that good land. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image, Catholic, or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. You want to see the equivalent to that? First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, excuse me, Chapter 5. See, now you got to beware. These, there are these devil replacement theology twits who like to say that we, the Church of the Living God, has replaced Israel. Hey, there is a playlist on the channel uh, that's for the Jewish people. Go find it. Okay? Go find it. Please. Okay? We, the Gentile, have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay? Covered that many times. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Remember what we just looked at in Deuteronomy? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled to us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. See, while under the uh, law, they were to be, we, we read it, the Jews, the nation of Israel, were to be God's representatives. People could come to them who were not of the Jews to serve their God. They had to go under the, uh, under the law and that kind of stuff. Today, the difference is, Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood to make an atonement for sin. We go out to them. We do not call the lost unto us and have fellowship with us that, we, that they may get saved. No, we go out to them. See. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter... What are you doing, Brad? Beg your pardon. Ephesians chapter 2. Verses... 11 on to verse 22. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands that, that at that time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. And we already looked at, under the law, someone could come to the Lord uh, under the law, but they had to put them, themselves under the yoke of the law. Okay? But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes, ye who sometimes were far, eh, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, 
who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. We're going we're gonna to see what this means. Hold on. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, even having slain the enmity thereby, one body comprised of Jew, Hebrews, and Gentiles, those who are not Jews. Okay? And came and preached peace to you which were... Uh, which were afar off, and to them which that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens grafted into their tree by grace through faith. Look at verses 8 and 10 in Ephesians chapter 2. You read that yourself, okay? Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Pope Peter himself being the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone Catholic. in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the capital S Spirit. And that is by only going through one way, the way of the cross, not by like these lying devils who just believe and save themselves, who are thieves who go up another way, or these ecumenical devil twits. God loves you. God's not going to judge you. God's love is unconditional. Ephesians chapter 3. What is this talking about? Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 1 unto verse 12. What is this talking about? Something changed. Yes. The dispensation changed. See, that was the dispensation under the law. Okay? But this, we are in the dispensation of the time of the Gentiles. When we Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. Like I said, done plenty of videos talking about this. But what is this ultimately talking about? Something changed. Ephesians chapter 3, beg your pardon, verses 1 under verse 12. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of the Gentile, ah, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Catholics, you like to talk a lot about mysteries, don't you? Yeah. As I wrote aforetime in few words, whereby ye, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. What is that mystery? Which in other ages, other dispensations, was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capital S Spirit. So they weren't looking forward to the cross all the way in the book of Genesis. Okay? That's a lie. Okay? But what is this mystery? Here it is. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus by the gospel. That's the mystery. That the Gentiles are grafted into the tree of the Jew, the Hebrew and are made partaker of the promises of the Jew because of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ because of the blood he shed and that we came to him broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord called upon him and by his grace he saved us because you are saved by grace through faith. Okay? That's the mystery, Catholic. That's the mystery. Whereof I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. 
Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery that the, the Gentiles are grafted in. Okay? Which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. They weren't looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament under the law. They weren't. It was revealed unto Paul. Okay? To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. The mystery is us Gentiles being grafted in to their tree. See? Okay? Go to Galatians chapter 3. Go to Galatians chapter 3. What about the law? The law. The law of the scriptures. The Old Testament law. See, you Catholics, when they say law, oh, they're talking about the uh, catechism, the missal, the uh, Vatican II, the teachings by the Jesuit fathers, and so on and so forth. Okay, when the the Hasidim today talk about the law, the Torah, they don't mean just the first five books. They encompass the Talmud and the Kabbalistic magic. But when God talks about law, He's talking about the law given in the Scripture. But what was the purpose of the law? And as you saw, Catholics can their ways are movable that thou canst not know them. A good way to uh, spot a Catholic uh, coadjutor, Jesuit infiltrator is how indecisive, um, how unstable, and how they constantly change their ways. Okay, It's one thing to be corrected by a brother, to be convicted by, of the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is that spirit. It's one thing to be corrected and to publicly admit your mistake and... Um, Repent of it publicly. It's another thing to change on a whim because of fear of man. It's a totally different thing. Okay? But what served the law? What served, what was the law there for? Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 unto the close of the chapter. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Seed is singular, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, Paul talks about in Romans about, I would not have known co uh, to not covet unless it had said not to covet. Might be also in Galatians, but, but Paul said that you don't know what sin is until you hear, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. That kind of stuff, which is contained in the Ten Commandments, which you could not keep perfectly. Okay, You wouldn't know what sin is until the Lord, through his word, lets you know it. Okay, Even though it is written in your heart. Because isn't it strange that if you instinctively know that killing is wrong, that lying is wrong? Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one, spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons that make one God. The Trinity is satanic, by the way. Is the law there? Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Yeah, because the law told you what was sinful. It was there to break you, to kill you, meaning break your self-righteousness. You couldn't keep the law at your best state. Okay? So hence, the law itself is good because it showed you what God's perfect requirements are, but it killed you because you realized, soon realized, you couldn't do it. So the law is good because it's God's perfect requirements, but it kills you because you can't keep it. 
Verse 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterward be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. And what was done? While under the law, it was what God will do. As today, it is what God has done. See. But after faith has, came, or has come, excuse me, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. You're no longer under the law. You're under the law of Christ. You know, Paul gives the commandments for us today in Romans chapter 13. Okay? For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. See, uh, he's talking about those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, new creatures. Just because you believe does not mean you are of the church of the living God. You have to come to him on his terms broken and contrite, which these easy believism devils really have a problem with, especially calling upon the name of the Lord because they have no fear of God and they are too arrogant and stuck up in themselves. They're too proud to humble themselves before the Lord. Aren't you there, Smiley? Yeah, yeah. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Greek is a Gentile. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. This is talking about salvation. Culturally, um, actually physically, uh, guess what? Yeah, there's a man and there's a woman. Even though uh, Satan wants to blur that distinction of gender. There are men and women. There are Jews. There are Gentiles. Yes, this is talking about in Christ. Salvifically pertaining to salvation. You are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. It doesn't matter if you're a male or female, bond or free, barbarian or Scythian, black, white. Doesn't matter. You're saved, born again, converted, washed uh, by the blood of the crucified one. You are my brother. You are my sister. Culturally, that's a different story. Self-ethically, we're all one. Big difference. And if ye be Christ's, then ye, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. God's ways are equal, fair, and just. Oh, Jesuits, Catholics, are not God's ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? As we have clearly seen. People, there is no unrighteousness in God. God is a God who chooses. Okay, it's not Calvinism either, you wicked devil. No. God chose the law, he chose the cross. Okay? People, you need to wake up to these things, like right now. Because we, the church of the living God, are going to be redeemed, caught up, resurrected, and get out of here. And you are going to be left with these Catholic devils who are going to forcibly convert you to their system. Like I said, the information, the links, there are going to be a lot of links in this video. Uh, the links that you're going to see here, Check them out. The videos, watch them. Consider these things. Ponder these things. Because time is running out. And Catholic, oh, Catholic. Catholic, Catholic, Catholic. You know, we pray for Catholics who are blind. Uh, there's a difference between a Catholic who knows what he's actually doing or she's doing and have given themselves over to that um, system. There's very little hope for those types. But those of you who are nominal, who know nothing, please consider these things. 
It's going to be it for this video. This was not the video that I had intended on doing today. But a dearly, dearly beloved sister sent me something and um, just <laughs> let a fire into me, boy. Um, so it's going to be it for this video. Please consider these things. Thank you for watching this if you do. We love you. We pray for so many of you. Please keep us in your prayers. Thank you to every single one of you who has helped us and prayed for us. Thank you. May the Lord reward you with fruit abounding a hundredfold. Thank you. Because this isn't about us. We could not do this if it wasn't for our Lord Jesus Christ through you, the Church of the Living God. We love you. Thank you so much for watching if you do. And we will see you in the next video, okay?